we always want to make sure as a district that we are utilizing our taxpayers dollars in a very wise and cost efficient manner so as you listen to this presentation about facilities understand that we are trying to make sure that we can maximize the dollars that we get from the state and the dollars that are entrusted to us from our community so that we can provide the highest possible education in the best possible facilities. So let's take a few moments to actually understand the state of our current facilities. On this chart you will see all of our school buildings listed and you'll notice the ones not in gray are our three newest elementaries that were built in 2018. The rest of our buildings that are in the highlighted gray section, you can see the years they were built, ranging all the way back to 1923, all the way up to 1999. The state of Ohio actually rates the educational viability of our buildings. This actually indicates the kind of environment that facilitates learning in the 21st century with things such as air quality, lighting and temperature, acoustics, and the rating that our buildings have gotten range anywhere in the 40s to 50 percent except for obviously Montfort Heights which is 73 in our new buildings. The state of Ohio also rates the buildings on the cost to renovate versus replace. When the state looks at this um, they rate the buildings based on how much it would cost to renovate versus replace the building. If the cost to renovate is to be 66% or more of the replacement cost, the state actually recommends that we replace the building with a new one. You can see on our list, all of our buildings except for Montford Heights are above the 66% and are slated by the state recommended to be replaced, including Corn Elementary that is at 91%. Additionally, when we look at just keeping our buildings warm, safe, and dry, that's looking at things like um, the building envelope, making sure that windows are sealed, air is not getting in, the outside elements aren't getting into the building, the plumbing, the electrical, all the different systems in the building. You can see on this chart the amount of money it would cost just to build our build, bring our buildings up to speed to be warm, safe, and dry, not educationally appropriate or viable based on the state standards. This does not include the costs for Coleraine L and Coleraine Middle School because of the fact that they are already slated to be replaced. So as you can see on this slide, just to address the warm, safe, and dry issues in the majority of our buildings, it would cost $40 million. In order to do that, we as a district would also need to come to the community for support around a bond issue to do that. When we look at the needs of the district, we always juxtapose it against the needs of the community and the way we can best utilize resources from the community to meet the needs of the district. That's why with the Renovate Replace and Educational Viability and our ability to take advantage of some programs that the state offers with earning credits for our current um, master plan projects and cashing those in on future phases. This is a very financially um, stable way to move forward with our plan. You can see on the timeline that Crosley Field was built in 1912. Coleraine Elementary was not far behind that in 1923. As we move through the timeline, we move into the Great Depression. Corey Middle was built in the 30s, and then we move into the 1940s and 50s with color TV. White Oak in 1961. Corrine High School in 1964. Riverfront was built in 1970, and Riverfront no longer exists. We now have Great American Ballpark, and so the Reds have been through three stadiums, and our students are still being educated in Corrine Elementary. At some point, when you look at the cost of the building to maintain it, um, sometimes you start with a Model T, but after a while, the cost to maintain that, try to get parts, becomes prohibitive from a cost standpoint. And it's more cost effective to purchase a new car. We are at that phase with some of our buildings that in order to be cost effective and use the community's resources wisely, 
we need to invest in new facilities. For more information about our master facility plan, visit nwlsd.org and click on Building Our Future.